Hi, this is Rob Graham, the Director of Training at Learning Craft, and we're starting the Part 2 of the Bewildered Cat Project. Now, if you're coming into this for the first time, I encourage you to look around on YouTube and see if you can find Part 1 of this video, which will explain how we got the first few features of the Bewildered Cat into place. What we're going to do now is we're going to pick up, and we're going to add functionality so that we can move this cat around in, in different ways. Well, let's take a look at one other function within this portion of the video, and, uh, and that, let's look at Alpha. So once again, I'm going to go in and put some program on to this button by selecting it, and then go into the action buttons. And uh, let's start off once again by determining the criteria that gets used. And uh, we'll just use release all the way across. So once again, if you click your mouse on this, open curly bracket, I'm going to want you to do something similar to what we just did with the uh, resizing. In this case, we're going to have a different criteria, and I would need to create a brand new variable to collect new information. So. I'm going to declare it by saying, okay, var, I'm going to call this one visibility. And this, once again, is going to be equal to our math randomizer. And uh, once again, make sure you spell things correctly. That makes a huge difference. It looks like I have an extra period there. That's not going to help things much either. And in this case, when we're dealing with visibility and alpha settings, uh, we have a choice between 0% all the way up to 100%. So the number we would want to use here is probably 100 to say, OK, you can be either almost invisible or all the way fully opaque. Once again, I don't want to generate the number 0 because I don't want this object to disappear totally. So I'm going to make sure that at least no matter what number is generated, it always equals 1. That means the number that will be generated in this case is always somewhere between 1 and 100. I don't really care if I truncate the value. We're not going to see it. It can certainly apply to the visibility just as well. So I'm not going to bother with the truncating code at this point. Once again, it's simple enough saying, hey, cat, in this case, I want you to take a peek at what your alpha setting is. So make sure that should be, there we go. And the alpha setting is going to be equal in this case to whatever the value of visibility ended up to be. Okay, once again, we finish this off. We put in a closed curly bracket. We should be all set to go. I'll check the syntax. And one of the things the syntax checking won't take, if I've misspelled variable name here and here, it won't take it into consideration. So sometimes it won't work because these have a different case sensitivity or they spell differently. But in this case, it all looks good. I'm going to go in here to my alpha settings. And if I click on this, it now fades it. Well, looks like it's almost faded out all the way there, depending on what the random number that's generated. And now I can use that in conjunction with my resize. Let's make this a little more visible for us. And now I can move this thing around. Even though it's slightly faded around, I can resize and set the alpha settings. The thing we want to do now is we want to come into our Move button. And what the Move button will allow us to do is to move the cat around on the stage. So I'm going to start by going in here to my Actions window. And once again, I'm going to start by establishing whatever criteria that I'm going to use to determine what this cat does. In this case, in the event that somebody comes and releases their mouse button, basically, if they click on the button and then let go of the mouse button, then I wanted to move the cat around in some way. Well, to move the cat around, we need to think about how we're going to do this. And the first thing we need to do, of course, is to create a variable and spell it correctly. That will allow us to determine the position that the cat needs to go to on the stage. I'm going to create a new value, a new variable called xcord. And all this is is a bucket I'm creating that will take a value that I'm going to generate by using a randomizer. And as we had done before, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, all right, once again, spelling is fundamental. And I'm going to say, I want the math random. Now, the criteria that I'm going to use to determine where this object should go on the stage really is based upon the size of the stage. Let me back out of here for a second. And if I go in here and I click on the background of this project, it tells me that my stage is currently set at 550 by 400 pixels. Now, if I want to move this object around, I can move it so that it always goes somewhere on the stage so I can always see it. And I'm just going to use these numbers as the criteria to determine where the cat goes. Once again, let me click the Move button, go back in here. And so to that point, I'm going to say I want to, the width, my x coordinate, the number, the value going across is going to be based on the value of 550, which is the width of the stage. Now, because I don't want to generate a zero as the value at all, I'm going to always make sure that whatever I generate, I add a one to it automatically. 
And I'm also going to be looking for whole numbers just to make life a little easier for myself. So once again, let me go in here and truncate whatever value we generate by going in and adding a math floor. Let me put the parentheses around here. Once again, order of operations, it's going to do the content inside these parentheses here, and it's going to truncate it and put that whole value into this variable bucket we've created called x chord. Now, once again, we've done all the hard work once. Let's go and just copy what we have here, paste it down, and all I need to do is change some of the values. In this case, we're going to create a variable called x chord for x coordinate, and instead of a value of 550, we're going to set that value worth 400. Uh, that'll be the height of the, uh, of the stage and also our y value. And it's as simple as that. So now we've gone and we've generated two numbers which have gone into these buckets. It's a matter of going and applying it to our program. And the way we're going to do this is the way we did it with the other buttons. We're going to come in here and we'll say, okay, Cat, talking to you, I want you to go and set your x value, and it's as easy as that, equal to whatever the variable we had, which is x chord, okay? And, oh, by the way, cat, I want you to do the same thing with your y value. Underscore y equals, in this case, y chord, semicolon, and I'm done with the program. I'm going to go and now put a close curly bracket. If I close out of here, and I run the program, if I click on move, the cat starts darting around my stage in all sorts of places depending on what the values that were being randomly generated for the x and y axis positions. Okay, And by the way, we can also still go in here and resize it and control its alpha settings and all that good stuff. Finally, let's go look and see how we can rotate this cat around and see how that will work for us. To get the rotate button going, I'm just going to go in here and select it and then go and open up my actions window. Once again, we're going to set it up so that when anyone releases their mouse button over this button, it's going to execute the following scripts. Once again, we need to create a variable value. And in this case, uh, well, let's call it just uh, how far. Okay. Once again, we can name it whatever we want. It can't start with a, a number or a blank, but apart from that, we're all set with our variable naming. So how far is going to, once again, let's just generate a random number. So math random. And in this case, because we're rotating something in a full circle, the value we want to work with is probably based on 360 degrees. Now, once again, because anything we do in Flash that randomizes is going to be based on 0 being the first number, Actually, this will generate a number between 0 and 259. And since we don't want to have a 0 generated, I'm going to go in here and make sure that a 1 is automatically added to anything that gets created. We can go and truncate this again if we want, and why not? So math floor, and put these guys all in parentheses. So now what will happen is we'll generate this value, and then it will truncate it, and then it will stick it into this bucket we've created called how far. And finally, it's just a matter of going in and saying, hey, cat. And what we're looking for now is a command that cat understands called rotation. And rotation is going to be equal to whatever the value of how far is. And uh, spelling this correctly is going to make a huge difference in its effectiveness. Okay? And that's the end of that. We put in a closed curly bracket, and we should be all set to go. It's always good to proofread these things, make every sure everything works well. Looks good from here. I'm going to close this off and run the program. And now if I say rotate, the cat will start spinning around in various places. I can resize it. I can move it. I can change its alpha settings. And uh, I can basically do whatever I want to this cat to bewilder it beyond its wildest expectations. Okay. Now, obviously, this is a very limited program, and its real design is to teach you how to create randomizers and how to apply the data that's being generated to a movie clip so that you can change its characteristics on the stage. And uh, certainly feel free to play around with this. Once again, if you're coming into this without seeing the, uh, the other portion of it and you want to play along at home, you can pick up the kit for this at www.learningcraft.com forward slash flash kits forward slash, and in this case you're looking for a file called bewilderedcat.zip. And that's all I have for this lesson. 
As always, if we can help you at Learning Craft with any of your training needs, we provide training in the areas of media application development as well as online advertising technologies, and we'd be happy to talk to you. Feel free to contact us at www.learningcraft.com. This is Rob Graham. Hope you have a good time with this project, and I'll see you real soon.